Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions? This story does not add up. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome, fellow freedom lovers. Those that do not wish to be slaves, listening to us across the globe on satellite, the internet at InfoWars.com and Global Shortwave, WWCR, and all of the great people here in the United States and Canada listening on the AM and FM dial. I'm Alex Jones. It is Friday. Thank you for joining us. There have been four new scandals, uh, all as big as Climate Gate, uh, several of them affecting the White House, proving more systematic, conscious willing fraud of course i didn't need this stuff to come out and be admitted to know it uh, they they know polar bears are the best land swimming animals best land animals uh, at swimming and there are lies about all these polar bears being found dead when the truth is their numbers are exploding uh, all over the world uh, from russia and northern europe right into canada and alaska and uh, london telegraph reporter james dillingpole is going to be joining us to talk about polar bear gate and uh, three other big in Enviro fraud gates uh, coming up at T-minus uh, 30 minutes. And then Al Jorgensen, the founder of Ministry, uh, that I found to be very politically astute, uh, I mean, going back into the 1980s, uh, very aware of the New World Order and, of course, an extremely uh, uh, popular band, uh, you know, really influenced a lot of the modern music that we see, both rock and roll, uh, what you'd call techno, all, all this stuff, are really big granddaddies uh, of all of that. And I noticed that there's a lot of uh, people twittering around the office excitedly uh, over the fact, I think almost everybody in the office, turns out, are big ministry fans. And, of course, a few years ago, they, uh, with a lot of courage, came out with a 9-11 Truth uh, album, and uh, if you go back to uh, the early 1990s, they had albums out dealing with the New World Order. It's about right and wrong, good and evil, uh, sampling George Herbert Walker Bush and his world government calls. Uh, and so the founder and uh, front man uh, for ministry, Al Jorgensen, will be joining us in T-minus one hour. Bob Chapman, of course, always joins us. Uh, and boy, now is the time. Every Friday to cover the week's economic news, in the week ahead, this is the time to have Bob Chapman on the debt ceiling, uh, open talk of the dollar being completely devalued, uh, the big ratings agencies that work for the private banking families uh, holding the United States hostage, the mainstream corporate whore media that's really not mainstream anymore, the dying dinosaur media that still thinks it's dominant is a proper assessment, and I myself have to stop using that term mainstream media. Uh, they are running around lying uh, saying, oh, my gosh, uh, the people in the House, you know, they just want America to default. No, no, no. There's a debate on how much taxes are going to be raised on who and what the spending cuts are. But the media is just like, why won't the Republicans give in and do the right thing and not have the country go bankrupt? And, and by the way, I'm not saying the Republicans are good either. Um, their plan is better than Obama's, but that's like saying... Well, Obama only wants to shoot you in the head 100 times. The Republicans only want to shoot the country in the head 90 times. And Ron Paul's on record saying all of this is deck chair rearranging on the Titanic. All of this is putting perfume on a pig or lipstick. Uh, all of this is, is, is much ado about nothing. It's really a question with the Republicans and Democrats to their banker masters. How are we going to skin this republic? You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and 
uh, how are we going to do it? And uh, the Republican plan is just cut off a little more of the slop to the public, who are already having the slop they're being given and being less and less through inflation and other things, uh, and pay more to the foreign bankers. And Obama says, no, let's rape more of the middle class and keep slopping uh, the public. Uh, I'll break it down when we come back. And we've got all this other news, big TSA, police state news. Uh, it's going to be a power-packed info uh, transmission today. It is Friday, the 29th day of July, 2011, year of our Lord. Stay with us. Okay, this is breaking news. Uh, welcome. It is Friday. We have a very uh, informative and information-packed Friday edition. Uh, thank you for joining us on this 29th day of July, 2011. I uh, got a call last night and today uh, from a gun dealer who I've known for many years, and uh, he doesn't want to come on air, uh, but it deals with the ATF and what they are uh, secretly ordering gun shops to do around the country. And, of course, you've heard that uh, they, uh, outside of law, are, are just saying, well, when you sell high-powered rifles or sell more than two, uh, you're to call us and report on people. And, of course, that's ridiculous because you're already going through the FBI NIC system and it's already all chronicled right there. This is just about extrajudicial, outside of law. They say jump, you say how high, boss. It's called dictatorship, authoritarian uh, command and control. Uh, but there's even more than just that going on. And... Uh, we are getting the document. He's been trying to get it to me for a day. We're, we're getting a specific document, and we should have that for you later in the broadcast today. Uh, and, of course, uh, this is par for the course. Obama launching a war in Libya without congressional approval. Congress says, hey, we're supposed to give approval. He says, I don't care. Uh, listening to talk radio this morning and monitoring television news and the Internet news, uh, the people are saying, oh, Obama, use the 14th Amendment. Use the Reconstruction power that was used against the states. Ignore the Congress. Take the power of the purse. Uh, turn us into an open empire and, and the office of the presidency uh, being the figurehead uh, uh, system of dictatorship. You know, fix the debt ceiling. Save us. Give us free gas, free houses you promised. Uh, deliver us into the international bankers' hands. Thank you for working with George Bush to sign us on to a thousand plus trillion dollars that we don't owe and then uh, beating us over the head all day with it, uh, telling us that uh, no one's social security checks or welfare checks or, or uh, welfare food stamp cards will stop working. Save us, oh, oh gracious. Oh, please, the head of your economic council's working hard to fix the economy by moving all of General Electric's main operations to China like Boeing and others are doing. Oh, yes, you will save us. You care so much about us. Please, please help us. Please, please take our firearms. It will be much better once you do that. Please help us with government-run health care written by the insurance companies to force people to buy it and to have federal control over what procedures you can have, just like the National Health Service in England. Here's a London Independent article dealing with this. Cataracts, hips, knees, and tonsils. National Health Service begins rationing operations. Uh, and uh, it, it just goes on that uh, you're not going to get the hip and knee replacements unless we say so. You're not going to get cataract operations. You're not going to uh, get tonsillectomies when you need them. You're not going to get grommets to improve the hearing in children. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a hearing aid. Uh, funding's also been cut in some of the IVF treatments for the national. It just goes on and on here. Uh, and, of course, this has been going on for many years. I remember six, seven years ago, I played clips here on air because I happened to catch it and tape it somewhere in our labyrinth of unchronicled piles of hard drives and data tapes. Uh, but I, I watched debate in the House of Commons, and, and, and they would get up and, and, and prime minister's questions and they would say, Prime Minister Blair, and, and then they would read the name of their constituent. My constituents died two days ago. Nineteen months ago, they, re they requested the brain surgery that is 97% operable if done in the first month. But instead, they waited more than a year and a half and died. Tony Blair, yes, I'm fully aware of that, and I'm just sorry. That's the way it is. Mm. Next question. 
My constituent uh, had a broken leg and they would refuse to fix it. It was a compound fracture. They did not do the surgery and now uh, they uh, were dying of gangrene, had to have the leg removed. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. <laughs> and and uh, you get up here and you explain to people, hey, in these countries where they have socialist health care, it is rationed. You do know that. And the big companies that are uh, in the private rationing control, they make even bigger profits. And it's about eugenics and death panels. And they're like, shut up, you wild-eyed scumbags. Well, here's the book written by Tom Jaschel calling, you know, that if you're blind, get a cane. Uh, or if you are uh, got a bad knee, get a cane. I mean, they actually say that. And uh, th this is all about getting new taxes, and then the bankers steal it out the back door. It's like no matter how much money you give the VA, it all gets stolen out the back door. They don't give the troops good health care on average, the worst in the world. Uh, this is how it works. And I, and I just see these articles everywhere. And now I can play the clip. I probably played it 15 times. You can just search. Uh, Bill Gates says death panels are needed. And he goes, he says, well, they are really death panels, but you don't give an old lady care. You can hire 10 teachers. And there's like all, the, he's talking to a government group. They're like, ah, ah. You know, it's triggering this predator function in the brain. Hey, you kill old ladies, you get money. Of course, these fools that are, you know, 40-something years old in the audience are like, yay! You know, soon you'll be, you know, having your your health care cut. And, and, and so that's how they do it. They get everything communalized, everything in a big pile, and then they steal the money out the back door, you use the control for social engineering, and then tell the public, hey, uh, if, you, um, if you live just like we say, do everything we tell you, and you're part of a, quote, in-group, then you might get some health care, but the bureaucrats are going to decide. And that's exactly where they want us, just like now with the debt limit. Um, they can openly hold everybody hostage and say, go deeper into the bank's debt, or you won't get all these goodies. And then the lion's share of the, quote, debt that we've signed on to, over 90%, is not owed by the American people. It's not defense. It's not Social Security. It's, it's, it's none of this. Most of the tax money is siphoned off for interest on the creation of money. Since 1913, almost 100 years ago, 98 years ago, since 1913, private banks took over the issuance of currency and credit. And for a dollar to be created, a dollar of debt is created to them. That's pretty good business if you can get it. And that's why everything is about bankrupting us. Everything is about getting us into debt because we were going into debt to them over nothing. But now they've created the derivatives 12 years ago, over a thousand trillion worldwide. They say the US owes 600 trillion, the Washington Post reports. And why do we owe it? Because the politicians said too big to fail and signed us on to it, saying the whole economy will be brought down, total tyranny, martial law, total collapse, blood in the streets, cats and dogs living together. I'm talking about wrath of God type of stuff, to quote Ghostbusters. That's what they said in Greece a few months ago. That's what they said in Ireland a few months ago. That's what they said in Iceland. That's what they say here in the U.S. three years ago. And now they're right back to it, and then government gives in, and, and, and see, the public right now with this whole debt limit thing and being taught about dollar devaluation and, 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 and being threatened with total default and total collapse, the public's being set up now that, oh, it was our $14 trillion in debt that we actually, through welfare and through entitlements and defense, really do owe through Treasury bills to people that have bought them. It really is $14 trillion we owe. And then you find out that the city of New York, Manhattan, years ago had over a trillion dollars in liquid slush funds in the comprehensive annual financial reports. You find out that there are families, um, Russian media estimated the oligarchs who turned out to be Rothschild fronts, that was even the Financial Times of London, control $300 trillion, and that was a decade ago. That was 2001, a decade ago. So the bankers have created $1.5 quadrillion they, they got everybody to tie their pension funds to it, to tie your real investments to it, and now they hold everybody hostage, and they keep taking us deeper down this road of give us more power, give us more control, or you will be destroyed financially. But you notice now that it it's like a young woman and a guy in a parking lot puts a gun to her and he says, get in the car, I'm going to kill you. Well, honey, he's planning to take you 
to a shack where he's going to slowly rape and torture you over a couple months and what psychopaths call using you up and, and feeding off the begging and the crying and the pleading. That's like Beethoven to them.